So you could be forgiven for thinking, Megan, you never do five star predictions. This booktube staple video, five star predictions, the books that I think I'm gonna give five stars. And that's because I refuse to do a new one until I have read the books from the first one. The last one I did was almost two years ago. <laughs> And I still haven't read all the books. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, they love you. You could also be forgiven for thinking, Megan, if you think you're gonna give them five stars, surely they're the books you're gonna read the quickest. And that would make logical sense, but it's not what's happened. <laughs> so I realized that I've still got about three books that I haven't read from <laughs> five star predictions video that I did two years ago. I was still living in Leeds in my little old flat there. And I just decided enough is enough. Enough is enough. We're gonna read the books, okay? So the three books that we're gonna be reading in this vlog are five star predictions, but <laughs> I've been putting them off for so long that they've also become the books that I'm very nervous to read now. So let's chat about them. First, we have got Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Marina Garcia. I put this on the list because it was like such a big book at the time. Everyone was reading it, everyone was loving it, and I was just convinced that I was gonna love it too. If you've been here, you know it's become a book that I'm terrified to read. All I know about it is that we've got our protagonist and her cousin has recently married this guy, and she, uh, the cousin writes to her saying, oh, I think he's gonna try and kill me. There's stuff to do with the family, there and she goes to live with the cousin and try and figure out what's going on that's all I really know so yeah f yeah five star prediction everyone <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna be nervous. Then we also have Snow White Learns Witchcraft by Theodora Goss. Theodora Goss, as you guys know, is the author of my favorite series ever. And this is a collection of short stories and poems by her. And listen, I put it on here because everything I've read by Theodora Goss, I've given five stars. And I don't feel like that's gonna stop now. So I believe, I this one is probably the one that I feel most confident about, uh, about the three that we've got left. Like I feel like it's Theodora Goss, you know? But the fact that it's a short story and poetry collection Collection, I feel like that's also difficult to get a five star because you're not gonna love every poem and every short story like five star. Do you know what I mean? So we'll see. And then we have also got Wild Beauty by Anne Marie McMore. I put this on the list I remember because everyone told me I was gonna love Anne Marie McMore's writing and a lot of people told me that this is where you should start. This is like the best book. So that's why I put it on there. So those are the three books. It would help if I got them all the right way around. Those are the three books we're gonna be reading in this vlog. Old five star prediction so that I can be freed from that old five star prediction video and eventually in like a couple months do a new one. Because I feel like two years ago Megan and me Megan are very different people and readers. So we wanna be freed from the shackles of that old <laughs> Star Prediction video. So yeah, I don't know what order we're gonna read them in, but let's just go ahead and get started. Now, this is gonna be five stars. This is gonna be five stars. Why a magical realism is my shit. It's my shit. And the fact that I still haven't read a book by Anna Marie McCamore, like honestly, it's over for me. Today, I decided to start with Wild Beauty. I thought about it, I asked my patrons, they were like, start with Mexican Gothic. We are going to pretend we didn't hear that. But I just feel like Wild Beauty is gonna like, ease me into this difficult <laughs> journey of reading these books that I've been so excited for such a long time but have been avoiding. So I'm gonna start this, but we are going out, me and Tom are going out to do some shopping today. I wanna get maybe some more exercise clothes, maybe some trainers, maybe some more loungewear, that kind of stuff. So we're going out shopping today and hopefully we're gonna go to a restaurant that I've wanted to try for ages. So <laughs> I'll take you along with us. But yeah, that's the plan for the day and maybe this evening or tomorrow I'll check in with you with my first check in for Wild Beauty. I'm hoping if I say it quick, I won't think about it and think about how long I've wanted to read this and that I'm finally reading it. And the pressure of that, I can't take the pressure of it. <laughs> Anyways, let's go. I just finished filming another video, but I thought I would check in with you about Wild Beauty. I am halfway through and I'm really enjoying it. Here's the thing, it doesn't, oh, squeaky chair. 
Um, it doesn't feel like a five star yet. So, but I am really enjoying it. <laughs> no, that sounds bad, guys. And forgive me for saying it, but that's how I felt. So we're following uh, this group of cousins. So within this family lineage, they all live on the same property. They can't leave. And there's always five daughters born. So we have like five grandmothers, five mothers and five daughters. Anyone that they love disappears and they can all like make flowers. It's all very magical, fantastical. Listen. And there's a boy who turns up. They don't know where he's come from. Is he like a lost love from hundreds of years ago from someone in their family that's like come back for some reason? That's kind of what's happening. And they have to save their house. There's kind of like an insidious man who might try and kick them off the property. And they're only really safe living on this property uh, because of magic. <laughs> magic cruises. There's a lot going into this book. I don't want to tell you all of it. Anyway, that's enough. There's something about Anne Marie writing that is unlike anything I've ever read before. And I can't quite put my finger on what it is. It's got this like, the way it looks at the world is so unique. The way it articulates in this, it's got this beautiful writing, right? It's lush, it's vivid. And the way that it articulates feelings and emotions and desires, is really interesting. It's really interesting. I'm enjoying it. I'm not like, wow, this is five stars, which, you know, <laughs> this is a five star prediction video, but I'm having a lovely time reading it. I'm loving, I think this kind of concept of this family of all these women with all these relationships is very interesting, particularly amongst the cousins. And also the cousins all love the same girl. Um, and that's very interesting. And their relationship with one another and the boy, the boy, kind of doesn't remember where he's come from and him learning and them teaching him stuff. I'm just really enjoying it. Like it reminds me of when I read Gallant, which was a recent four star where I read it and I was like, oh, I just, this is a good four star. Like this is like great, enjoyable four star. And I love that. <laughs> Not every book has to be a five star. And I'm glad that I'm finally reading something from Anne-Marie McMore because I want to read all of their stuff. The writing still feels like unknowable, untouchable to me. Do you know what I mean? It still feels like I don't truly, I'm not truly like acquainted with the writing. And I don't feel like I'm going to be that until it gets to the end of the book. I'm, it's still a bit unusual and I'm still like figuring it out. So yeah, I'm going to try and finish this today. I have the audiobook, which I'm enjoying as well. So hopefully I'll see you this evening with my final thoughts. But yeah, at the moment it's not a five. It could become a five if it's an amazing ending. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so I just finished Wild Beauty. <laughs> I don't mean to make her nervous that much. I don't know why I, I paused so much then. Uh, I'm gonna give this four stars. It wasn't quite a five, but I did enjoy it. So let's talk about it. So I found this book really difficult to talk about. I feel like sometimes you just come across these books that just seem, you just struggle to articulate talking about them. There's something about Anne-Marie McMill's writing and this book, I don't know how else to describe it other than it feels nostalgic, but I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Like it feels like timeless. It feels how I would feel when I was younger reading a fantasy or a magical realism book for the first time. And like how that, that, that feeling, that untangible feeling, what that would bring up. I felt like this brought up as well. And I don't want to spoil anything, but I didn't predict the direction that this book would go in. And I really appreciated it and what it was saying. And I'm just really excited to read more Anne-Marie McMore. I, I feel like I don't know what to say to you. The reason that it is a four and not a five is that I have, I literally finished it like what, an hour ago? And I still feel like there's something about it that was like unknowable to me. And not in the, like a, not in the good way like I was talking about before. <laughs> There's like, I'm like, I don't, what, did I just consume that story? Like I always felt like a little bit of a distance from it. And there were some moments where like, I felt like, okay, I had a picture in my head of what's happening. And then like an action was described that a character was doing. And I was like, wait a sec, how are we doing that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I missed the part where maybe like, so say they were standing up having a conversation and then suddenly they're lying down and I missed the part where they went from standing up to lying down. Stuff like that kind of just took me out of it. I was like, hold on a second.
So that's why it's uh, a four and not a five. But I'm really excited to read more from Anna like Kamal. I want to read all of their books. <laughs> I'm so excited to try them all. I own The Mirror Season, but I want to try a lot of the other stuff. But yeah, I would recommend this to people who like, you know, beautiful lyrical writing. It's different, you know, and it describes actions and thoughts and feelings in a very interesting and different way. So yeah, I'm glad I finally read it. It has been on my TBR for forever. This feels like, you know, kind of a... What's the word? Not momentous enough for what a momentous moment this is. But yeah, no, I enjoyed it. Didn't love it, but I enjoyed it. So I actually need to go away from this vlog, bye bye, and read uh, the video for this month's wrapped up, which you will have already have seen. But once I've done that, I am going to start Snow White Lens Witchcraft. I'm making you wait for Mexican God. <laughs> I'm making you wait. We're gonna read that last. This feels like a good middle book, you know? I don't feel like I should end on this. This feels like a, ooh, I just really got bunged up then. This feels like a good, you know, middle book to read. So I'll check in with you maybe when I'm like halfway through this. It's not very long. And I'm hoping it won't take me that long to read. Theodora Goss wrote The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, which is one of my favorite series. Eight short stories and 24 poems and it's uh, retellings of fairy tales. So like, Theodora Goss can just do like retellings and reimaginings. Like I just, ah, I can feel it. Her writing is some of my favorite writing I've ever read. Like it's witty, it's funny, but it's deep. And I love how she explores things that we already are aware of and already know and like kind of picks them apart and puts them back together. Hello, hello, hello. So I'm currently on midday of reading spits my patrons and I have gotten, I feel like you need to raise up a bit. You raise me up so I can stand on <laughs> I'm halfway through Snow White Learns Witchcraft and I'm kind of obsessed. <laughs> I'm loving it, guys. You're simply the best. You're better than all the rest. So I'm halfway through. Yeah, I said that. And you can see tabs. <laughs> Who is she? I have been writing my rating of each one on here. Eight short stories and 24 poems in this. I'm pretty sure all of the short stories so far I've given five stars, right? <laughs> poems, I think are harder to rate. Like, can you really rate a poem? I don't know. I think I'm gonna judge my rating more on the short stories, but we've had like, in terms of other ratings, like a three, a 3.5, and then I'm pretty sure everything else has been a four or a five. I am obsessed. I am obsessed. All you need to know about this is that it's basically fairy tale retelling. So one of the early short stories is, it's called, what is it called? The Rose in 12 Petals. This was a five star. It's a retelling of Sleeping Beauty, but it's told from 12 different perspectives. So we have the witch, the queen, the magician, the king, the queen dowager, the spinning wheel. We read from the spinning wheel's perspective, the princess, the gardener, the tower, the tower, <laughs> the hound, the prince, and the rose. How cool is that? Like this story split into these 12 sections. I just loved it. I am loving it so much. It reminds me of what I loved so much about Strange Case where Zero Gross was taking these characters or, you know, a character adjacents that we knew so well from classic Victorian literature, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, Sherlock, and reimagining it and keeping the magic and the, you know, what we love about classic Victorian literature, the vibes, but making it new and making it feminist and making it cool. And that's what she's doing with fairy tales. Like she's reimagining these in such a, a cool way. And I, I don't even know how to describe to you how obsessed I, I've never felt such an affinity to an author's writing like I do with Theodora Goss. Like the obsession that I got with it was, was borderline unhealthy. I don't know how I'm gonna integrate in society after this. <laughs> There's just something about the way that she uses language and words that makes me believe in life. <laughs> it makes me believe love is real. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it to you, it's not like lyrical, beautiful writing, like say a Lady Taylor or an Erin Morganston. But it has, especially in this one, because it's fairy tale retellings, got this like fairy tale, like clever wit, imagination. It's giving me a production. It's giving me a moment. It's making a memory. Like that is what I want and she's doing it. I am so enjoying it, you guys. You don't even understand. Like I'm obsessed. I'm really, really enjoying myself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read the second half. It doesn't take that long. I'm actually reading it slower than I would usually. So when I'm 
not reading along physically, I'm listening at 1.5 speed. And when I am, I'm only listening at a two. And usually I would say my listening speeds are like 1.8 and 2.8 for with the book or not with the book. So I'm reading it a lot slower than I would usually, but I'm, I'm just wanting to savor it and take it in and take in the meaning and take in the moment. I'm loving it. Oh, I didn't even tell you that one of the short stories has a family of talking cats. And we have like one of the main characters, a talking cat. I just, this is what it feels like to be God's favorite, honestly. <laughs> like talking cats, get out of here. Talking cats. What, what, what more could you want? Anyways, I'm gonna go get back on the sprints and read a bit more, but I'm in love. But yeah, definitely preferring the short stories to the poems, but the poems are still great, but you can't really rate a poem, but I am just having the best time. Okay, bye. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning. I just woke up, did my skincare, finished Snow White Learns Witchcraft, and my immediate thought when I finished this was, what the fuck am I gonna rate this? <laughs> because for me, most of the short stories in this were like a four, 4.5, five. Where predominantly fives, I would say, was the largest <laughs> number out of all of those. But the poems weren't. I'd say I had a few five star poems, but then most of them were probably like a four, maybe even a 3.5. And I've been thinking about it. And like I said before, right, when I read a poetry collection, I don't rate every poem because you, you kind of just take everything as the whole, right? But when you read a short story collection, I think it is fair to rate each short story to kind of figure out what rating you want to give it. But I don't know. <laughs> so I've been thinking about it and my amazement and my love for this, my wow. And you know when you're just reading a book you go, oh yeah, like it does something different. It does something imaginative. Was so much higher for this than Wild Beauty. So much higher, like incredibly higher. So to give it a 4.5, I feel like isn't reflective enough of what I loved about this. So I'm giving it a five. I'm giving it a five. <laughs> It's not adding up. It's maybe a five star short story and poetry collection, which doesn't have the same enjoyment level as like a five star novel for me, perhaps. Do you know what I mean? But I just love Theodore Gross's writing. I don't know what else to tell you. This woman, I am obsessed. <laughs> There was so many cool short stories and so many, the short stories all had different vibes to them. Like there was some that were more kind of like historical, uh, twisting what a, fa a fairy tale is. But there was one also where it's like this witch and she goes back to the school that she studied at. It's very like the school is set. It almost feels like, um, what's the word of that show that everyone watches that I haven't watched, but I've seen parts of Gilmore Girls. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's like a coffee bookshop and it feels very quaint American town that the, the school is in. And she has to travel to this other world as a witch to find her shadow. And that kind of had that like, I don't know, yeah, like American Gilmore Girls vibe to it. Whereas other ones have this like historical, fantastical, complete other world vibe to them, which I really appreciated. They all had this fairy tale element running through them, but they had really different vibes to them, which I really enjoyed. So yeah, apparently Theodore Gross, can't do any wrong. And we got a we got a five star from five star predictions. <laughs> Let's all dance, everyone. <laughs> so yeah, I really I loved it. I loved it. There's a really lovely one near the end that's kind of based on Ariel as well. So anyways, today I Mexican Gothic is I didn't grab it, it's over there somewhere. Um I'm hoping to read all of Mexican Gothic today. This video is up tomorrow and I just feel like I can do it. I have got this evening a Zoom call with some of my patrons and a quiz night with my patrons. So yeah, that takes up some time, but <laughs> it's about one o'clock now. So I'm hoping if I just really focus, I'll be able to make my way through a good chunk of Mexican Gothic today. Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia is gonna be five stars. It's gonna be five stars. So this is a horror. I believe this one was a Goodreads horror last year. Oh my God, just holding this book. <gasps> oh! I have just heard that this really can get into your head. Hello friends. It's very late. I'm in bed. <laughs>
God, this, I, I have this feature on my camera that like means it's not as shaky for you when I'm holding it, but it zooms it in so much. I'm literally like as far away as I can get right now. Anyways, so I am halfway through Mexican Gothic and I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. I love good news. Love good news. I just love good news. <laughs> this first section, oh, let's get comfortable, shall we? This, <laughs> this first section has been pretty slow, but I get the feeling it's about to pop off in the second half. So basically, all you need to know is kind of what I've told you. So we're following Noemi. She gets a letter from her cousin, very distressed, saying my, his, my husband's family are trying to poison me. Yada, yada. Noemi goes there. The family's weird as shit. <laughs> they're like very into eugenics. Red flag, red flag, red flag. <laughs> they're just they're just like bad vibes. Like you're not they're not talking at the dinner. Like what the fuck is going on? Like we're not we're not vibing. And can I just say, I have a conspiracy theory that Silver Mara Garcia played Nancy Drew Curse of Blackmore Manor. It's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. Because it is, it, I mean, if you played House of Blackmore Manor, you know, Nancy's friend, um, everyone's convinced, or she's convinced, I can't remember, like, either the woman is convinced, or everyone else is convinced, that the woman, Nancy's friend, is turning into a werewolf. Hello? Yeah, no, What's going on? Can you say hi? No, say hi. I've already told them hello. Can you say hi? Hello. Well, I can't remember what I was saying. <laughs> oh yeah, that was it. So she's a werewolf. <laughs> and she so you go to her house, this like English house. By the way, they're like we're in Mexico, but like the house is very much like English, like white person aesthetics. And in Curse of Manor, you go to this Victorian house and you can't see her much because she's like, oh, I need to sleep. I'm convinced I'm becoming a <laughs> And so you're like talking more to all of the weird people who live in the house with her. That's exactly what this is like. This is so Curse of Blackmore Manor coded. It's so true. So Maria Garcia, please tell me, did you play Curse of Blackmore Manor? I have to know. But I'm just loving the vibes of this. I'm loving the writing. Noemi is such like a great character to read from the perspective of. I'm just obsessed. I'm having so much fun. It's got this eerie, spooky, gothic, oh my God. It's got this, you know, eerie, gothic vibes to it. And I really feel like every chapter really serves a purpose. Do you know what I mean? Like every chapter is important to the story i feel like the plotting and the pacing is really good there's also i didn't know like a little romance between noemi and one of the guys at the house which part of me is rooting for because he's kind of awkward and cute but also the family like you don't want to get involved with that you've seen what's happened to your cousin you don't want that to be you so also i'm kind of anti it i don't know i sat outside and i read like the first 100 pages whilst my family were doing gardening and it was kind of like it was only just warm enough to sit outside so it was kind of like chilly and and like you know in the book there's like this mist around everywhere and i'm like i'm so in the vibe right now the vibe is me and i am the vibe you know i'm gonna try and read some more <laughs> before i fall asleep because i'm really enjoying it and i would like to get as far through it as possible tonight so we're about to you know that's about to be the vibe anyways night Good morning, good morning. So I read most of the rest of Mexican Gothic last night. I have to finish off a little bit this morning because it got really late. It was like midnight and listen, I'm a grandma. <laughs> that was too late. Um, I've decided I'm gonna give it a 4.5. I know loads of you are like, Make it, just give it a five. If you gave Snow White Lens Witchcraft a five when you'd given poems in that like a 3.5, you can give this a five. But like, it's just not quite a five. That had some of my favorite short stories ever in it. Whereas this, I just had a great time, but it wasn't a five. It's the trophy. A five is a feeling. A five is a moment. A five is an instinct. And I don't feel like this is a five, but it's a 4.5. I could not put this down. I could not put it down. This babes, it took a turn. <laughs> the first half of this is very slow, atmospheric, haunting. The second half, fuck me, <laughs> that was intense. It goes places, I'm not sure I ever wanted to go. 
I'm not sure I ever wanted to go. I just feel like this is a book that I can recommend to so many people. I can see why it's been so popular. I can see why so many people have loved it, why it's been so widely read. Because I just think it's a great book. You know when you read a book and you're like, this is just like perfect. Well, not quite perfect because I'm going to give it a five star, but that's just me, that's me. But I did tell a bit of a lie there. In terms of writing craft, it's it. It's it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it just did it. It did what it needed to do. I I loved it. I'm so glad I have finally read this. I was worried as well about reading it all in one day. I was like, am I going to be forcing myself through this book that I've waited so long to read? Am I going to be doing it a disservice? But I could not put it down. I would have read it probably in a day whenever I had read it. It is just a solid horror haunted house, a little bit of romance, a little bit of intrigue. I'm still convinced it's Curse of Black Mormana coded because there's like a woman in this who's just like a woman in that game. Like it's just, it's a little bit freaky. A little bit freaky if you ask me. <laughs> I think the writing is incredible. I think Naomi's incredible. I think the atmosphere created in this, the haunting, the uncomfortableness. Like throughout the book, you can't really leave the house much. It's kind of like one of their rules. Like, you know, we all just stay here all the time. And I'm like, oh my God, how are we? How like I can't imagine it. <laughs> like just in the house for your whole life? Like what? Oh my God. It was just, it was such a solid book. And I am so glad that I have finally, finally read Mexican Gothic. Only took me like two years. You know, it only took me two years. <laughs> so yeah, listen, let's get the other books. Oh, I do, I do have not as good news. I have decided I could just like not say this and then I wouldn't have to explain myself. But I have decided to lower my rating for Wild Beauty to a 3.5 because I only finished this a couple days ago. I can't remember anything about it. <laughs> it's like left my brain and left my memory. So I've decided to lower it to a 3.5. I still enjoyed a lot of it, but I think me losing track of what was happening and not being able to picture certain stuff affected me more than I realized. And I gave it a four because I wanted in my heart to believe it was a four, but the more I think about it and I think about how much I enjoyed these compared to this, I just feel like it's a 3.5. So, but yeah, listen, we got a five. We got a five. It is a bit of a tenuous five. It's a short story and poetry collection five. <laughs> It has some of my all-time favourite short stories in it and they just touched my heart in such a way that I couldn't not give it a 5, but like, you know. <laughs> and we had a 4.5. I'm so glad I finally read it. So let me know what you thought of any of these down below. I would love to know. Let me know some five-star predictions that you have put off for two years, if you have. You may have better self-control and discipline than me, so... <laughs> <laughs> it might not be a problem. But yeah, let me know what five stars you have been holding off on reading. If you got to the end of the video, oh, comment an apple emoji. Comment an apple for Snow White down below if you got to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.